Hi everyone! In today's video, we're going to discuss oxidation reduction reactions, or redox reactions. So uh, earlier we talked about how iron can react with oxygen to form rust. And in that process, electrons are transferred from one substance to another. So oxidation reduction reactions are found in a lot of different places. Um, for instance, in our own bodies, we have oxidation reduction reactions occurring. Um, so for instance, uh, redox reactions provide us with energy from food. Um, it also provides electrical energy in batteries. So uh, in batteries, there's a transfer of electrons, and that's what allows uh, current to flow. And then again, uh, this occurs when iron rusts. So uh, for instance, if we have pure iron to start and it reacts with oxygen, we end up forming Fe2O3, or iron 3 oxide. So in this product, iron has a 3 plus charge, or each iron has a 3 plus charge, and each oxygen has a 2 minus charge, so that's an ionic compound. But initially, iron was neutral and oxygen was neutral. So there was an exchange of electrons from iron to oxygen. So again, redox reactions involve a transfer of electrons. Okay, so here's a simplified version of what I just showed you. So let's say we have two reactants, A and B. Let's say A has some electrons that it can give up to B. When it does that, Again, we have a transfer of electrons, and we'll end up with positively and negatively charged products. So if something loses electrons, we say that it's uh, undergoing oxidation. So oxidation is loss of electrons. And then if something gains electrons, we say that it's being reduced. So reduction is gain of electrons. So uh, this can be a little hard to remember. Um, so there are some acronyms you can use to remember which is oxidation and which is reduction. So the first one is oil rig. So oxidation is loss of electrons. So O, I, L, and reduction is gain of electrons, R, I, G, so oil rig. Another one that I learned when I was in school uh, was Leo the Lion says grr. So loss of electrons is oxidation and gain of electrons is reduction. So whichever one works for you to remember that a loss of electrons is the process of oxidation and a gain of electrons is the process of reduction. So as an example, the Statue of Liberty um, is pretty well known at least here in the US, and uh, it's green in color. So the Statue of Liberty is actually made out of copper, and as we know, copper is typically a kind of reddish orange color, um, but if copper reacts with oxygen and moisture in the air, it forms a green solid called copper two oxide. So uh, the Statue of Liberty is green due to that process. And that process is a redox reaction. So um, down below, we have our overall oxidation reduction process, where initially we have neutral copper and neutral oxygen. 
But then copper gives some of its electrons to oxygen, and we end up forming an ionic compound called copper 2 oxide. So copper has a 2 plus charge, and oxygen has a 2 minus charge. Now, we can also write this as two half reactions, where we just focus on either the oxidation process, so the loss of electrons, or the reduction process, or the gain of electrons. So if we look at the oxidation half reaction, copper initially is um, neutral. So notice the zero here that says that it's neutral. And then copper will lose two electrons to become a two plus ion. Now in this equation, we have two coppers just to balance everything out. So overall, we're losing four total electrons. So we lost two electrons from one copper and two electrons from another copper. Now, if we look at oxygen, and remember oxygen is one of our diatomic molecules, so it's in a pair with itself. Initially, that molecule is neutral but if it gains a total of four electrons, two of those electrons will go to one oxygen atom and the other two electrons will go to the other oxygen atom. So we'll end up with two oxygen ions or oxide ions, and each one will have a two minus charge. Now to get the overall uh, reaction shown down below, what we do is we cancel anything that shows up on both sides of the arrow. So for instance, um, we have four electrons in the products for one of our reactions and four electrons in the reactants of the other half reaction. So those will cancel out. And then we just have neutral copper and neutral oxygen in the reactants. So those will go uh, left of the arrow for our overall equation. And then we have uh, two copper ions and two oxygen ions, which will end up forming our ionic compound. Now, uh, I'm not going to make you write half reactions um, just yet. You will have to do that in general chemistry. For now, we're just focused on what is oxidation, what is reduction. And I might ask you to identify whether a reaction uh, has oxidation and reduction. Now, another example of an oxidation reduction reaction, um, this one's pretty common. If you place a strip of zinc into a beaker filled with copper ions and sulfate ions. What's really cool is that the copper ions in solution are going to gain two electrons from the zinc that's sitting in the solution. So zinc is going to give up two electrons to that copper ion. So the copper ion becomes neutral copper, and it's going to deposit itself on the surface of that zinc strip. Meanwhile, uh, the neutral zinc that gave up two electrons is going to become an ion that's floating around in solution. So you'll notice at the very end of this process, the zinc strip will have a nice copper coating on it. So uh, this is another example of a redox reaction where electrons are exchanged and we end up with an entirely uh, different metal on that surface. So this is actually a similar process to silver plating. So if you've ever seen things plated with silver, it's kind of a similar process to this. Okay, so let's identify each of the following reactions as oxidation or reduction. So let's do the first one together. So initially we have neutral tin, SN, 
And then in the products, we have uh, tin with a four plus charge, so that's an ion, and four electrons. So if electrons are shown in the products, that means that the metal has lost electrons. So if you lose electrons, oops, is that oxidation or reduction? So remember our acronym oil rig or Leo the lion says GER. So loss of electrons is oxidation. Okay, so if you want to pause the video and try the other two problems on your own, you can, and then we'll go over them together. Okay, so let's look at B. We start out with an ion, iron three plus, and then uh, we're adding an electron and in the products, we end up with iron two plus. So when you see electrons in the reactants, that means that the metal is gaining electrons. So is that oxidation or reduction? Reduction. And again, you can always reference that oil rig acronym if you need to. All right, and then in C, we have neutral chlorine, and chlorine is one of our diatomic molecules. So remember Hofbrinkel. So chlorine is one of our uh, elements that's always found in a pair with itself, at least when it's neutral. And then... Um, that chlorine is gaining two electrons, and in the products, we have two chloride ions. So if we have a gain of electrons, what type of reaction do we have? Reduction. All right. So this is more what I would ask you on a test. I would give you one of these half reactions and you would have to determine is the metal losing electrons or gaining electrons? And is that oxidation or reduction? All right. Now, there are other definitions for oxidation and reduction other than a loss or gain of electrons. So for oxidation, it could involve an addition of oxygen or a loss of hydrogen, which makes sense, right? If you're gaining oxygen, that's oxidation. Um, now in reduction, that's going to involve potentially a loss of oxygen or a gain of hydrogen. So oxidation and reduction are opposite of each other and they uh, typically go hand in hand with each other as well. So one real world example of um, a redox reaction in our body um, is if a human ingests methanol, which is also called methyl alcohol, uh, this can be pretty poisonous. Um, so the process is shown below. So methanol is CH4O. So that's its chemical formula. And our bodies will break that down into formaldehyde and hydrogen atoms. Now, formaldehyde, some of you might know, is what's used to preserve bodies. Um, and it smells really bad. Um, but formaldehyde in our systems is not good because it's going to uh, preserve, basically, our cells. Um, and then formaldehyde will react with oxygen in our system to form formic acid, which also isn't good. 
Um, and then formic acid can react with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water, which isn't that bad, right? But some of these products that form um, in the previous steps are not good for us. And so we can end up experiencing um, organ failure. Uh, some people will go blind over time if they consume enough methyl alcohol. Um, so uh, up above, I have an article. Uh, this was from, uh, let's see, 2019. And what's interesting in this article, uh, I don't know if you remember that there were some tourists in Costa Rica and the Dominican Republic who were uh, dying at resorts because they were consuming alcohol that was tainted with methanol. Um, so, you know, give that article a read. It's it's kind of interesting. Um, but there are uh, a lot of, I guess, shady <laughs> businesses where they'll put methanol into alcoholic beverages uh, when really alcoholic beverages contain something called ethanol. So ethanol is perfectly fine in small quantities, um, but this is C2, let's see, I believe it's H5OH. So uh, yeah, methanol or methanol is poisonous, ethanol is fine. Um, but again, these are all redox reactions that are occurring in our bodies if you do consume methanol. So in the first step, you have oxidation because there's a loss of hydrogen atoms. In the second step, that's also oxidation, but this time it's because there's an addition of oxygen atoms. And then in the last step, there's also addition of oxygen atoms, so that's also oxidation. All right. So again, just to summarize, um, oxidation always involves a loss of electrons, but it could also be seen as an addition of oxygen or a loss of hydrogen atoms. And then reduction always involves a gain of electrons, but you could also see this as a loss of oxygen or a gain of hydrogen. All right. So that's the end of module four. We're going to move on to module five um, in the next video. So I will see you then.